Blessed love and greetings, family. In the name of the Most High, Kadama, we have the last first year. Rastafari, Empress, Many Night Balance. I'm Anja Mikey with you, greetings and love. Today, we are going to continue with our series readings and reasonings from the wise mind of his Imperial Majesty Emperor Haile Selassie first. Yeah, get your copy from Frontline Books, Amazon, anyway there, like I say, it's a small pocket book filled with quotes from various speeches and teachings of the King of Kings. Yeah, now today I would like to read from another one of my favourite chapters, which is called Leadership, because there are many people, um, there are many people here in Ethiopia and around the world, but especially in my experience, I found here in Ethiopia, there's many, many people that like to talk, that like to talk about His Majesty, but they don't have actual researched information like we were talking about in the previous one on education. Only somebody who is well informed can comment intelligently on the situation. So if you're trying to reason about something, if you're trying to reason with somebody who's researched His Majesty long time, you know what I mean? Yeah, you might have certain facts and things from this side of things, but we have to take this half of the story and this half of the story and put them together to get the full understanding of Wagwan. So there's many people who would like to criticize His Majesty's leadership. There are many people who say, why didn't he do this? Why didn't he do that? Instead of saying, why didn't he do this and why didn't he do that? Why don't you look at what he did do, which was phenomenal? You know what I mean? So yeah, family, um, leadership. Like I say, if all world leaders study this book, especially this chapter on leadership, the world would be a better place. His Majesty representing the example of the greatest world leader to have graced this realm, this earth, in the modern time. Yeah, in our and I lifetimes. So we give enough thanks for His Majesty and for the revelation, for loosening the seven seals and, you know what I mean, putting I and I onto this journey and this knowledge and such and so forth. So we give thanks, family. Right now, we're going to read from chapter 10. Leadership, you can see I've scribbled all over my copy and that is much encouraged to study. This is why everyone should have a personal copy. Me, I don't really like borrowing books because I like to write all over them. You get me? And I feel like everybody should, if you want to get a copy of a book, get your own copy so you can study it up. If you can't, you can use post-it notes or whatever. Anyhow, wise mind with there. Rastafari, I give thanks. So family, leadership. His Majesty, His Imperial Majesty talking on leadership. Before we get into it, let's not forget when His Majesty went to America, I believe 1954, um, and he was welcomed by John F. Kennedy, the president at the time. And John F. Kennedy actually did a speech where he welcomed His Majesty in front of the public. You can find the video on YouTube. And John F. Kennedy made a very important speech because he said, Your Imperial Majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie I, you are the greatest example of a world leader that we have ever seen. All of us, all of us world leaders, we are in awe of you and we feel ashamed when we look at the great things you've done for your country. Not only your country, your people, but for the whole world. And therefore we admire you and your presence here today is the greatest gift possible for the American people. Yeah. So imagine John F. Kennedy giving a speech like this, the President of the United States of America saying that your Imperial Majesty, that his Imperial Majesty is the highest example of world leadership and all other leaders are in awe when they see him. You know what I mean? And let's not forget, it was only one month after that speech that John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Yeah. Now, we don't know the full political details of John F. Kennedy, but me know say that man was exposing the Babylonians in some way. And especially by giving a speech like that, glorifying the king of kings, glorifying the only free country in Africa, glorifying the black king of kings, the emperor, as the highest out of all of the world leaders. Yeah, the Babylonians never would have liked that. So it's not a surprise that one month after that speech, John F. Kennedy was assassinated. But they don't teach us that in school. They teach us in England we learn about John F. Kennedy being assassinated, but we never learn about his majesty. We never learn. We learn about World War Two, but we'll never learn about Mussolini invading Ethiopia. You know what I mean? They just leave out crucial, crucial and key parts of the history every time. And that's why we advise ones and ones to do your research. Know thyself. Knowledge is power when applied properly to create. Rastafari, we give thanks. So let's get into it, family. Chapter 10, leadership. Big up yourself. Drop a comment. Bam. Like, share all those things, yeah? His Majesty says right here, leadership does not mean domination. The world is always well supplied with people who wish to rule and dominate others. 
The true leader is of a different sort. He seeks effective activity, which has a truly beneficent purpose. He inspires others to follow in his wake and holding aloft the torch of wisdom, he leads the way for society to realize its genuinely great aspirations. Yeah, Leading the way with the torch of wisdom, leading society to realize its great aspirations. Yeah, Now, I want to address something because there's a lot of people, like obviously we know in Ethiopia with the current political situation, divide and conquer, we know there's some people that feel like his majesty was against them now let me tell you if you research if you're a knowledgeable person if you research your facts properly you will find that his majesty was not biased against any one particular group in ethiopia his majesty stood for the unification of all of ethiopia yeah and his majesty had the job of bringing ethiopia from the ancient time into the modern time which is a very difficult task when ethiopia at that time was still in its ancient ancient biblical ways yeah so you know what I mean? There's a lot that people would like to say. But if they research properly the facts for themselves, they will find that His Majesty stood for the unification of the whole of Ethiopia, the whole of Africa, and the whole of the world. You know what I mean? The whole of Aymanati. So we give thanks. And we forward on right now to say... And look, one more thing I want to say. Some people say, oh, His Majesty... Because His Majesty got the throne after um, the death of Empress Auditu... Now, some people say, oh, His Majesty was conspiring because he wanted the power. Yo, His Majesty was destined for the throne before he was even born. His Majesty was never interested in power and personal riches. And I can give you a piece of evidence because when His Majesty went into exile in England, he never ran away. When he went into exile, the Italians and the English, they were all telling him, just leave Ethiopia, just forget about Ethiopia, give it for the Italians, give it for the British, and you can live exile in luxury. Everything you ever wanted will be yours. So if His Majesty was not for his people, if he just wanted power and riches and fame and glory, why would he not just take those bribes and live exile in luxury and become a rich man? No, His Majesty was spending money out of his own pocket. For the sake of the Ethiopian people. So please my brothers and sisters. Know the king of kings. Know thyself. Rastafari. Hear this now. The art of leadership consists in the ability to make people want to work for you. When they are really under no obligation to do so. Leadership is required in all fields. And no field is without its usefulness. Within his own sphere. Each has the same opportunities for showing ability and the same potential satisfactions as has the leader of a government. So His Majesty is saying there that we all have the same abilities. Nobody has more abilities than another just because of their governmental position and such. Yeah? His Majesty says that leaders are the people who raise the, standard, who raise the standards by which they judge themselves yeah? and by which they are willing to be judged. The goal chosen, the objective selected, the requirements imposed are not merely for their followers alone. They develop with consummate energy and devotion their own skill and knowledge in order to reach the standards that they themselves have set. This wholehearted acceptance of the demands imposed by ever higher standards is the basis of all human progress. Yeah. So His Majesty is saying that leaders must stand out, they must make a difference, they must prove their worth by acting and standing for what they say they believe in, yeah? And set a real example for the people that they claim to be leading. So His Majesty says here that leaders have to submit themselves to a stricter self-discipline and develop and develop a more exemplary character than is expected of others. Let me read that one again. Leaders have to submit themselves to a stricter self-discipline and develop a more exemplary character than is expected of others. To be first in place, one must be first in merit as well. So, as a leader now, one must exercise self-discipline in order to set an example for ones to follow. Because if they see, if we as subjects look to uh, somebody who we feel is leading us or helping to guide us in our way, you know what I mean? And, you know, if we see them not so disciplined, we see them slacking, then we too would feel like, oh, it's okay to slack it. No, a leader must submit themselves to a stricter self-discipline and develop a more exemplary character than is expected of others. To be first in place, one must be first in merit as well. His Majesty says here that a good leader maintains a balance between emotional drive and sound thinking, not letting emotions 
get in the way, not acting upon emotions without thinking. This reminds me of when, um, when the Italians were defeated, when Mussolini was defeated, and His Majesty could have said, and he was in all rights to say, kill and behead every Italian in the land. He could have said that, but he didn't, because he showed a higher example, and he exercised a stricter self-discipline and showed a more exemplary character because he exercised what is known as the Christ consciousness. And he said that any of those Italians do not touch a hair on their head, disarm them and send them out the way they came. And if they want to stay, they may stay and help for the benefit of Ethiopia. Now, imagine a world leader showing such mercy and forgiveness as this when the Italians have come and dropped poison gas, have committed all kinds of wicked, terrible acts have broken the international laws of war even. And His Majesty says, forgive them, do not harm them. Let us show them that we are better. Let us set a more exemplary character. Let us lead them to good and show them that we are loving people. Let us exercise more self-discipline. Yeah, so His Majesty for Ayman, Rastafari, right on time, the picture there. His Majesty for Ayman is the greatest world leader. If you can think of another let me know in the comments. But there is not another world leader as great as His Majesty, especially in this modern world time that we're talking about in I and I lifetimes. Put him in the comments, put her in the comments, point them out. If you can show me somebody that spoke, a leader that speaks the way His Majesty speaks. And this is where we promote the knowledge and the teachings of the King of Kings. Like I said, we're not here to convert, we're not here to preach. We are here to promote the true knowledge of His Imperial Majesty. What did he do during his time as King of Kings? What does His Majesty stand for? What are the ideals of the Emperor? Rastafari. Let's forward on family. Once a person has decided upon his life work and is assured that in doing the work for which he is best endowed and equipped, he is fulfilling a vital need, what he then needs is faith and integrity coupled with a courageous spirit. So His Majesty is saying that once you feel that you've found your purpose and you know your mission. What you need to achieve that mission is faith and integrity coupled with a courageous spirit because without those things you would not achieve your mission. We must always keep the faith in every single thing we do. Family, wherever we go, we must never lose the faith. We must keep the faith because Jah is with I and I, within I and I, all around I and I, all of the time. So we big up all humanity, all the humanity locked in right now. Rastafari, from Ethiopia, Africa, the origin of civilization as we know. Rastafari. So, um, folding on. All right. Apologies, family. There was a comma at the end. I thought it was a full stop. Let me reread this quote. Once a person has decided upon his life work and is ensured that in doing the work for which he is best endowed and equipped, he is feeling a vital need, what he then needs is faith and integrity coupled with a courageous spirit so that no longer preferring himself to the fulfillment of his task, he may address himself to the problems he must solve in order to be effective. Now look at that very important line. No longer preferring himself to the fulfillment of his task. Now, sometimes in life, you know, we know that the message, we know that the works, like if we know our work, if we know our purpose, you know, we have to always, everything we do must be in striving to be in fulfillment of that purpose a lot of the time we get caught up in ego you know we get caught up in different things of the world you know what i mean and we know that we are in the world but not of the world but we get caught up in many of these worldly things such as ego or you know fame and all these things that man as himself Wishes for himself, but this is not what God wishes because if God has given you a mission So once again, I'm going to read that one more time Once a person has decided upon his life's work and is assured that in doing the work for which he is best endowed and equipped He is filling a vital need what he then needs is faith and integrity coupled with a courageous spirit so that No longer preferring himself To the fulfillment of the task he may address himself to the problems he must solve in order to be effective yeah and of course by fulfilling the work that you are born to do you are fulfilling yourself all everything else is a distraction everything else is an illusion because by fulfilling your purpose you are fulfilling yourself you know what I mean and you realize when you're in realization of this then you know that you must put the mission first 
each and every time. Yeah? And His Imperial Majesty says right here, to lead, one must first learn to follow. To lead, one must first learn to follow. There are many leaders in the world who, who, who would refuse to follow because they want to be the leader, they want to be in control. But to know how to lead, you must first learn how to follow. We know that His Majesty um, grew up, was a teenager in the time of Emperor Menelik II. We know his father, Ras Makonin, was a very wise man who embarked a lot of knowledge upon him. So we know that his majesty was raised by the orthodox priests in the church at the time when the church was still at the higher heights of its elevation. You know what I mean? So your family is deep. We have to know the true story and not the propaganda, not the Chinese whispers that we're so used to hearing about. Yeah? Right. So his majesty says, yeah, to lead, one must first learn how to follow. Um, patience you know how can you preach and teach if you cannot listen you know some of the notes that we make long time ago when we write it how can you preach and teach if you cannot listen in the first place Rastafari right. so family we give thanks we forward them right now his imperial majesty says right here we're, we're reading chapter 10 leadership sorry I may have said education a moment ago we're on chapter 10 leadership here we're dealing with leadership it is by deeds rather than by words that you can most effectively inspire actions speak louder than words are you somebody who does what you say you're going to do within the time that you say you're going to do it are you somebody reliable and trustworthy in that sense yeah it is by deeds rather than by words that you can most effectively inspire and somebody who is a leader must fulfill those things somebody is a leader somebody who is a leader must do what they say they're going to do when they say they're going to do it otherwise the people will say your leader what happened to that thing you told us you were going to do? We're not trust you again. The people have to trust their leader. There has to be a mutual trust and respect and inner standing, which there was during the time of His Majesty within the majority of the population. If you do your research, if you speak to some elders from His Majesty's time, yes, there are people who are also against His Majesty. But more time I found in my experience, those people who are against His Majesty, when they give you your re their reasons, if we analyze the reasons and we find the root and the source, you know what I mean? Sometimes there's certain things missing, there's misinformation. It's a very complex situation right here in Ethiopia. Yeah, I invite ones and ones to add to the reasoning in the comments if you feel you have something you want to say, something you want to add. You know what I mean? But if you're going to start dissing His Majesty for no reason, you better come with some evidence and facts to back up your claims. Because Mino say there's enough propaganda out there. And right now we're reading straight from the lion's mouth himself. So anybody who have anything, what they want to say, as Robert Nesta Mali, Brother Hansel, Asi, Bob Mali would have said, they better come and say it loud and clear. You know what I mean? Because right now, we're just dealing with the truth. We're not dealing with Chinese whispers. We're dealing with knowledge is power applied properly to create, not applied foolishly to destroy. To my skin. Forward on right now. His Majesty says that love, generosity, and understanding are evidence of the administrative experience of any government love generosity and understanding are evidence of the administrative experience of any government so let's not forget governments are here to govern the people they should be governing the people with love generosity and understanding in this 21st century we find that most of the world is being governed by people who are not for them you know most of the governments of the world are not for ani &I. And in this time, they don't even hide it anymore. They used to pretend like they were for A&I. &I. They used to do things in secret. But these days, they just push it in our face. They say, yeah, we're not for you. We're wicked. And they don't hide anymore. And that's what it says in Revelation. There will be no place for them to hide. In the last days, they will be revealed for all of humanity to see. So if you have eyes to see and ears to hear, you will see and hear what's going on in this time. So don't be blind. Know the signs. Know the times. That's the fire I will give thanks, family. Now... That's the end of chapter 10, leadership. Um, just like I said with education, which is very important as well. Leadership is um, a very important factor for His Majesty and he speaks a lot on leadership. There are more quotes within this book that speak on leadership. Um, he talks as well about disarmament. I will have to find the chapter where His Majesty talks about how all the leaders of the world should make disarmament the priority of whatever they're doing. Drop whatever they're doing. Disarmament is the priority of all nations because until all nations are disarmed there will be no peace between nations there will not even be a hope of peace on earth as long as nations still possess weapons that can destroy lives 
nuclear weapons and so forth. His Majesty speaks in this book about disarmament, about di getting rid of all nuclear weapons. You know what I mean? He says that Ethiopia, yes, or he says, you know, we must have weapons and these things to protect ourselves because of the threats. But if all of humanity can reach to a stage where they can collectively agree to banish nuclear weapons, to banish the weapons of war from the earth, then the world will be a better place. And this family is leadership because I have never in my life heard another world leader speak like this. Rastafari and Brahali Selassie the first, the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, Nagus and Agast, Rastafari. We give thanks to the power of the Trinity, yeah? So, yeah. Wow, I feel like I could go on and on. Maybe I'm going to have to record the next video right now. But family, all I'm going to say is, get a copy of the book. You know what I mean? If you are interested to further your studies into the life, the teachings, the works of His Imperial Majesty and the mysticalities and the revelations that come with all of those things. Um, Life-changing. The wise mind of His Imperial Majesty and Brahali Selassie the first. Like I say, the newer edition has got a new cover but it's still the same pocket book full of quotes and information you can carry wherever you are in the world Rastafari we give thanks we big up our sister Almaz we big up all freedom fighters remember it's good over evil the line of Judah shall break every chain and give I and I the victory again and again so we give thanks family Ethiopia the only country never colonized the origin of civilization yet yeah. his imperial majesty Emperor Haile Selassie first talking on leadership very important reasoning so please share this one and check it out for yourself do your research one love to all humanity jara stafari give thanks